Now, no page builder is perfect, and I'm not gonna pretend that the block builder is either. But in helping a lot of people get started using the block builder, I've noticed that they're often taking the long way around to do things. So in this video, I'm gonna share five little secrets that will improve your workflow, cut down the list of plugins you need to use, and make building with blocks just a little bit more enjoyable. So with that, let's go ahead and dive in and take a look. If you haven't noticed, the block editor comes with just an enormous amount of blocks. On one hand, this is great because you can accomplish a lot of things with these blocks, but if I'm honest, I've not used nearly a quarter of these and probably never will. So really, all these do is get in the way. But did you know that you can actually hide all the blocks that you're never gonna use? To do that, we click the kebab menu in the top right corner, go to preferences, and go to blocks. Here, you're gonna find a list of all the blocks, all the ones from Core, as well as any third-party add-ons you've added, you're gonna find each one of them listed out here. And for anyone you know you're not gonna use, you can just uncheck it. So if we go through this list and take out a bunch of these things we know we're not gonna use, you can even take out entire categories at once. So we could get rid of all of these or just pick and choose the ones we do want. We'll close this panel. And now when we click the block inserter again, you can see our list is much shorter. This makes it so much easier to find the blocks you need when you need them without having to sort through a giant list of them. And of course, these aren't gone forever. They're not deleted from your site. If you're looking for something you can't find, you can always go back to the same place and recheck whichever block you need and it'll come right back into the view. I found this especially handy when I hand sites over to clients. I can hide away the blocks that I don't want them to use and they'll never even know they're there. The second thing I wanna share with you is making sure that you're memorizing some of the keyboard shortcuts. I'll include a link down below in this video where you can get a list of all the shortcuts that come with the block editor, but here's a couple that I'm using all the time. The first is to delete a block. To delete a block, you can press Shift-Alt-Z on a PC or Control-Option-Z on a Mac to delete one block at a time. Here I had the container selected, so it was deleting the container that held all the contents inside. Another one I use frequently is the duplicate shortcut. To do that, you press Control Shift D or Command Shift D if you're on a Mac, and you can duplicate whichever block you have selected. And one that I use all the time is adding a new block. If you click into the end of a block and press return, you get defaulted to a new paragraph block. But if you type a forward slash, you automatically get a search function that comes up where you can search for the block you're looking for. So if I start to type in grid, it will filter that list down to grid and I can hit enter just to enter that grid. So by using the keyboard shortcuts, you save a lot of time not having to click around into various menus to duplicate things, delete things, or add new blocks from the block inserter. Next up, let's take a look at the reusable block system and a quick little snippet of code that'll make it a whole lot easier to use. Let's say you design this call to action section and you wanna reuse it throughout the site. It's gonna be the same in every instance, so you want one place to be able to edit it and manage it, but it to show up the same across the entire site. Well, all that is already built into the WordPress system through reusable blocks. If you click the kebab menu, you can create a reusable block. We'll call this CTA and save it. And now we can reuse this block everywhere across our website updated anywhere and it updated across the entire site. One of the problems I have with reusable blocks though is they're kind of hard to access. You can insert one here from the block inserter, but if you wanted to go see all the reusable blocks you have, you have to open up a page or post, go to the kebab menu, and go to manage reusable blocks. Here you get a list of all the reusable blocks, but that's a lot of steps to go find that. But there's a quick little snippet of code you can put in your functions.php file if you're using a child theme or use something like code snippets to insert it that's going to actually add reusable blocks to the menu over here just below your pages. I'm gonna do this inside of my child theme functions file. So we'll navigate here to the theme file editor, go to theme functions and paste this code in. You can get this code from the video description below. Once we hit save and refresh the back end, we'll see we now have a option here to get directly into our reusable blocks. This is something that I've just built into my custom child theme because I wanna have access to this on every install. I'm just so much more likely to actually use reusable blocks if they're in front of me and they're easy to access. Next up, let's take a look at a way that we can duplicate our pages really easy with a function that's already built into WordPress core. 
For a long time, I used the duplicate page plugin, and I'm not the only one. Over 2 million active installs on this plugin. And essentially what it does is give you a quick little button to be able to duplicate a page or a post. Now, I often need to duplicate pages when I want to start from some kind of template I've already created. But to install an entire new plugin just to do that seems like a waste. I don't want another plugin to maintain. Now, this little secret isn't quite as easy as the plugin makes it, but for me, this is a good concession to make to not have to install another plugin. What I can do is just edit any page or post that I want to copy from, go to the kebab menu, press copy all blocks. Now, every block on this page has been copied to my clipboard. We can leave this page, add a new one, We'll just call this paste. And if I press control V to paste this in, I've now just pasted that entire page into this new page. Like I said, there are a couple extra clicks involved in this one, but since the functionality is already built in, I really hate to add another plugin just to do this. Last on the list is the ability to edit the HTML of any of my blocks. Now this isn't one that I use all the time, but when I do need it, it comes in extremely handy. To edit a block as HTML, Simply select the block, click the kebab menu, and click edit as HTML. Now you can see all the HTML that makes up this element. Now, I will caution you, be very careful when you do this. It's easy to mess up a block. Obviously, this block is a pretty simple headline, so it's pretty easy to follow. But when you get into more advanced blocks and more customized things, it can be a little bit daunting and it's easy to mess something up. I typically get in the habit of copying that block or duplicating it before I edit as HTML. But let's take a look at how you could actually use this. One way I use it pretty often is to add a span tag inside of a line of text. So for here, we could add span, class equals, and we'll just call this pop. Now at the end of the word placeholder, I will close that span tag. Make sure to get rid of that extra space. And we can hit edit visually. Now that didn't change anything here on the back end, but now I've created a span around just this word placeholder that I can use CSS to do some tweaks to it. So we'll go ahead and publish this page, view it on the front end, and open it up in the customizer. Here in the additional CSS. So if we scroll down here, this word placeholder is what I wrapped around in a span tag. So now if we paste this little bit of CSS I wrote in, we can see that the CSS is making the color turn blue, changing the font weight, and adding a text shadow around the letters. So this is a great way to get in there and be able to edit just little pieces of content or make wholesale changes to the HTML inside of your blocks. Of course, you probably already knew some of these little tips and tricks, but hopefully you learned something new here inside this video. Any way to make the block editor a more enjoyable experience is something that I definitely think is worth sharing. If you wanna check out some more videos I've done on blocks, you can click either one of these videos up here and we will catch you on the next video.